Welcome back everyone for today's video we are going to be taking a look at the tie breaks in the semi-final of the FIDE World Cup being held in Baku, Azerbaijan. Now as you guys know Magnus Carlsen won a very clean match against the local hero Nijat Abisov by a score of one to half. Half, one win, one draw, no need for tie breaks. But in the other match featuring the number two ranked player in the world, Fabiano Caruana and Ramesh Babu Pragnananta from India, the players drew both of the classical games and they went to a tiebreaker. Now, as you guys know, I lost to Prague earlier in the event in the rapid portion. Let's see if Fabiano could do better. Let's jump right at the action. So here we go. First game of the rapid is 25 minutes with a 10 second increment if I'm not mistaken I could be wrong on the exact specifications but I'm pretty sure it's 25 minutes with a 10 second increment so here we go Fabiano with the white piece in game number one plays e4 and also just to set the tone of course it's two game mini matches two games of rapid chess if it's tied 1-1 then we move on to a quicker time control so we get e4 e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 Fabiano plays bishop c4 the classic Gucci piano which he did actually already play in this match earlier against Prague so it should come as no surprise we get bishop to c5 c3 knight to f6 d3 and now h6 played here by Prague now h6 is an interesting move the reason that Prague played this move I suspect is he wanted to avoid variations involving Bishop g5 in in the previous game which they played earlier I believe it went something like d6 castles a6 Bishop g5 h6 Bishop h4 and Prague actually got into a lot of trouble in that game so when Prague plays h6 on move number five he basically stops this move Bishop g5 and he's assuming it's going to transpose back into the main lines with d6 and a6 later on but white simply can't put the Bishop on the square so the big question becomes can white take advantage of this move potentially by using another develop developing move instead of putting the Bishop here so Fabiano decides to castle we get d6 Rook to e1 played by Fabiano, castles h3, a6, and now we've more or less reached the standard position that you get from the other move order. Normally, the way you reach this position is that after d3, d6, castles, you get h6, or not h6, sorry, a6, white plays rook e1, castles h3 and h6. But as we know, by inverting the move order and playing h6 first, it took away the extra option with this bishop move. So back to the game. So we get a4 from Fabiano. Prague plays bishop a7, knight bd2, and now Prague plays the interesting move knight to e7. Now, in this position, the main line, which has been played many, many times, is moved with rook to e8, and after knight f1, bishop to e6, we reach a very standard middle game where both sides have a lot of different ideas. So, knight e7 played by Prague, Fabiano goes bishop b3, we get knight to g6, and now knight to f1 is played, we get c6, and now knight g3. Now, I realized I went a little bit fast over the last couple of moves, and you're probably wondering, well, why did Fabiano play bishop b3 instead of just playing the same plan first? Now, the reason for that is at some point after knight f1, c6, and knight g3, black can potentially play d5, attacking the bishop on c4, and gaining time because white will have to waste time moving this bishop away from the square. That being said, I don't think it makes a huge difference. So we get this position with c6, knight g3, d5 played anyway here by Prague. And now on first glance, you'll probably think that after pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, white is simply winning a pawn, right? Because here you're attacking, one, two attacking, only one piece defending it. But the problem is that after knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook takes e5, black has this nasty move, bishop takes f2 check, sacrificing the bishop temporarily. And when you take back with the king on f2, black has queen to f6 check, checking the king and winning this rook on e5. If white moves the king, capture the rook. If you block with the rook, black simply takes the rook with the bishop, and black is a rook for a bishop and should win the game. So we get bishop to e3. Prague plays bishop to b8, retreating the bishop, but trying to guard both of these central pawns with this bishop on b8, potentially using both of these diagonals down the road as well. So in this position, after bishop b8, Fabiano goes bishop c2, Prague plays rook e8, and on first glance, I would say that it looks like the opening to this point has been a big success for Prague, because he has a very nice center with these pawns on d5 and e5, he can bring the bishop to d6 and e6, and in rapid games, one of the most important factors is whether you can develop your pieces and play quick, easy moves, rather than having to spend a lot of time. Additionally, Fabiano already at this point, down five minutes on the clock as well. So we get a5 here, bishop c7 played by Prague, Fabiano plays b4, trying to take advantage of these dark square weaknesses, which black has created by putting these pawns on these three squares. So here we get bishop to e6, 
Bishop to d2 played by Fabiano. Now, this is a move that I think Fabiano just played to try and avoid thinking too long and ending up too far down on the clock. It's not a move that makes a whole lot of sense, and I really don't understand it. Other than I suspect that here Fabiano was of the mindset that here... You spend like three, four minutes, maybe you come up with a plan, but if you spend that time, you're wasting time, you're going to struggle probably later on with less time, and why not try to play a simple move? And then after Black's move, you can react to whatever plan he comes up with. So we get Bishop to D2. Queen C8 played here by Prague. Now, this is a very peculiar move to me. I don't really understand why Prague played this move because as I looked at this position during the live broadcast, I had a feeling that Queen D7 was a much more natural move simply because you can put the rook on d8 and try to open up this d file down the road potentially and additionally when you go queen c8 exactly what is the idea are you trying to play for like c5 maybe are you trying to play for b6 at any rate it seems a little bit strange to me that being said i i assume that prague had probably looked at a variation somewhere within the italian where this queen c8 move is played so we get queen to e2 and now Prague plays bishop to d6. Fabiano goes c4 here, trying to do something in the center of the board because at this point, white is very cramped. You can't really play d4 here because I think after take six, there's probably bishop g3. And then after take six, bishop, not knight d5, after bishop d5, black is actually going to be winning some material on this open e5. So you can't really play for d4 easily. You don't really want to trade because then black is a great center here. So the next logical thing is to try and play c4 and really contest the center and force black to make a decision between trading the pawn or pushing the pawn to d4. So here we get d takes c4, d takes c4, knight to f4 played by Prague. Fabiano retreats the queen, and now we get this move c5, trying to justify the whole plan of putting the queen on c8 rather than putting the queen on d7. Now, this move is actually wrong. In this position, what Prague should have played is the retreating move, bishop to c7, simply because one of the big dangers here is that, actually not knight, so let me just play king h7, is that after takes, takes e5, white forks the bishop and the knight here. So you don't really want to allow those ideas to exist. And when you go to c7, if white ever takes, after takes, the knight is under attack, and you don't have the fork with e5 anymore. Prague instead plays c5, can't really fault him for this move, because again, it's a rapid game. You don't have all day to think, and you need to make quick decisions. So you get b5, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and now Prague plays c4 here. Now, on first glance, it looks like black is probably better because you have this pass c pawn going down the board. But in fact, white can blockade this pawn with bishop c3. And now black is in some trouble here because white can start pushing the pawns on the queen side. Additionally, your center's a little bit weak, and it's very, very hard to play. So here, Prague plays bishop d7. Computer likes knight d7 simply guarding this way rather than bishop d7. And now Fabiano plays rook d1, asking Prague a very serious question. How do you intend to contest this d file, and how do you intend to guard this pawn on e5 at the same time? Now, already here, it's very, very dangerous, very hard to play. And Prague plays this move queen c5 pretty quickly, and this is a fairly serious mistake. Now, if this were a classical game of chess, I suspect that Prague could have used a lot more time and found the correct continuation with bishop takes or not bishop takes, but bishop c5, because after white plays bishop takes e5, there's an amazing way to sack the rook with rook takes bishop, knight takes, and after bishop b5, even though black is down a rook for a bishop, with d's bishops on the diagonals and potentially threats like queen c7 now if the king sidesteps this bishop, black has a lot of counterplay here, and black maybe even is better. I think if this occurred in an actual rapid game, I would probably rather have black than have white in this position. That being said, it's the typical conundrum. Do you spend a lot of time here trying to look through a line, see if there's a solution that's okay, or do you just play a move that doesn't hang anything and keeps the game going? And I do think Prague's decision was the more practical one because I suspect that if Prague had used four or five minutes to calculate bishop c5, he probably would have thought that he was losing, and then he would have had less time. He would have probably played queen c5 like in the game, but he saves an extra three to four minutes, and this will prove very critical later on in the game. So we get queen c5. Fabiano plays rook a b1, trying to go for bishop b4 to win either the bishop on d6 or the queen on c5. We get the move bishop to f8 played here by Prague, trying to retreat the bishop and dodge any bishop b4 tricks. Fabi plays b6, and now Prague plays this move g6. Now again, can't really be critical of the players because they don't have a lot of time, but the computer actually thinks that Prague once again should have sacked the rook with rook takes a5. If white actually takes the rook after queen takes a5, shockingly, the computer thinks black is already better with the two bishops, probably because of the c pawn running down the board, the slightly weak b pawn, and these knights being much better placed than any of white's knights here. So again, black is probably a little bit better here, but with li limited time in a rabbit game, not realistic. And additionally, after rook takes a5, white can also play bishop b4, and now you have to sack the queen. And this position is actually okay, but very, very hard to play. So, 
Prague plays g6, another reasonable move, trying to stop White's knight from being able to jump to either the f5 or h5 squares. Fabiano plays queen to e1. We get this move, bishop g7, fianchettoing the bishop on this diagonal. But the one problem here is that now the bishop is very, very passive, whereas on the other diagonal, it was very, very active earlier in the game. On this diagonal, there simply are no threats. So Fabiano plays queen d2. We get rook a d8. And now Fabiano plays this move, queen d6. Now, Fabiano did use over a minute before playing this move, but I feel like this is where the game starts to slip away a little bit. If Fabiano had played this move, bishop takes e5, there's a very, very good chance he would have won the game because after rook takes bishop, queen takes knight, you have to move the rook back. And now after a6, suddenly white is pushing p on the queen side very fast, and black is close to loss. One sample line is pawn takes pawn. Rook to d6, attacking the knight. Let's say knight h7. And now b7. And there are all kinds of problems for black to deal with. Instead, Fabi plays queen d6. Now, this move still gives white an advantage. But the problem with this move is that at this moment in time, Fabi Yuano uses a minute, but he's up by two minutes here. But Prague's next three to four moves, he can pretty much play like this. So because this move, this move isn't really bad, but what it does is it forces Prague in a situation where his next couple moves become instant. And Fabiano actually starts to lose a time advantage now because after queen takes queen, rook takes queen, we get knight six to h5. Fabiano takes the knight, pretty much the best move here. You could play a move like king to f1 and hope for something like knight takes g3. But if you go king f1 here, there's this nasty move, bishop takes h3. Suddenly your rook is under attack. And after rook takes rook, bishop takes g2 check, king g1, rook takes d8. Suddenly black has two extra pawns on the king side and he should win the game. So we get knight takes h5, Prague plays knight e2, the obvious correct move, because if you were to take the knight on h5, after rook d1, white gets a double stack. You can play knight f6 to try and guard the bishop, but after bishop takes e5, suddenly black is completely lost. So Prague plays knight e2, king f1, knight takes bishop, knight takes bishop, king takes rook a1, and now bishop b5. And the problem here, as you see, is now after bishop b5, when we look at the clocks, Fabiano is only up 10 seconds now because all of Prague's moves were only moves. So Prague basically got to play five instant moves. Fabiano had to react, and Fabiano loses the entire, entire time advance here, and now it becomes very difficult to play. So we get bishop b5, rooks come off the board, Fabi goes king to e1, does not play knight takes e5 here because after rook to d2, suddenly your bishop on c2 is very vulnerable, and black is actually winning here according to the computer. So we get king to e1, now bishop to a6 is played on first glance, you probably think, well, why not just go f6 and guard the pawn on e5, but after f6, white has this move rook to a3, and uh-oh, spaghettio, your knight simply has no squares available to it, it will be captured no matter where you go, and you'll lose the game. So we get this move, bishop to a6, Fabi plays knight takes e5. Actually, it's worth pointing out here that the computer thinks the best move is this very un unusual idea of f5, because after pawn takes pawn, e4, knight h4, you have this move, g5, knight to g6, and rook to e8 here, and suddenly the white horse is dominated. The white horse actually now has no squares on f4, or h4, e5, e7, f8, or h8. All the squares are covered, so suddenly, just like that, black actually has three active pieces, and white is playing the game without a horse, and I think that black has great chances to potentially win here down the road because the horse is simply not in the game. So instead, we get bishop a6, Fabi captures on e5, we get the move rook to e8, and now Fabi goes king d2, knight takes e4, takes, takes, bishop f3, and now rook b5, an excellent move from Prague here, trying to claim the open b file, all the while keeping an eye on these two pawns on a5 and b6, and at this point, the game probably should be a draw. So Fabi goes king c3, we get rook to b3, king to d4, king f6 played here, Fabi plays king c5, and now Prague makes a huge mistake by playing this move c3. In this position, Prague should have played king to e7 to try and block out the white king from getting up the board, and this game probably would have been a draw at this point after king e7 seven we would probably gotten rookie one king d7 check king e7 rookie one with a repetition instead Prague goes for glory with c3 but this is a big mistake because now after king to d6 white is actually winning the game so Prague plays c2 we get rook to c1 bishop to d3 guarding the pawn and Prague figures well I've got rook b1 I'm going to win your rook I'm going to win the game but the problem with this line is that white has these two very advanced pawns in a5 and b6 and these pawns are actually quicker than the rook and the bishop in terms of getting back. So we get bishop takes b7, rook to b1 played. Fabi sacks the rook with rook takes c2. We get bishop takes c2. And now this excellent move, bishop to f3. And the problem for Prague is that the bishop controls this light square diagonal towards a8. And white can just push the p up the board. And your king can't get back either because your king is dominated by the white king on the d6 square. So here we get bishop to d3. B7 played by Fabiano. 
Prague goes Bishop a6 Fabiano plays King c7 and now Prague decides to check on c1 now if you were to just play a move like King e7 after b8 takes takes King d6 King a7 white wins the game because now with the King on b6 you can just push the pawn down the board and then you simply have a Bishop and three pawns versus these three lone pawns on the King side so here Prague plays rook c1 and Fabiano correctly plays the move Bishop c6 now this is the only winning move and it's actually really instructive to point out why if white plays a much more natural looking move which is king to b6 after takes and Bishop takes b7 here black can now play king e7 a6 and king to d6 here because if you go a7 there's rook to b1 check king cannot slide to the c file here and after king to a6 rook a1 you always have to stay on a6 or a5 and if you don't go back to b6 then you lose the pawn on a7 and you lose the game so we get bishop to c6 being played here by fabiano and prague plays the move bishop takes pawn king takes bishop and now he plays rook c2 and here fabiano throws the game with this move f4 fabiano has played a masterpiece over the last 10 moves he has achieved the winning position and now he falters now the win the winning idea here is not super obvious on first glance but it's to play the move a6 and maybe on first glance the wrong way of putting it it's not obvious what you do once you win the rook so fabi probably saw a6 takes a7 probably thought rook a2 pawn to a queen takes takes and king to a king to e5 and he figured well Black's king is getting in this should be a very easy draw now in this position white has to move bishop to e8 targeting the pawns on f7 and g6 and black actually loses the game here in this position because if you ever push the pawn you hang this one if you push this one you hang this one and if you go king f4 takes and king g3 white goes bishop d5 and then just slowly works the king back because the bishop and the two pawns hold each other together also worth pointing out here is that after rook a2 bishop d5 is also winning because after rook takes king takes the king cannot get forward here because the pawn on f7 is always hanging and after g5 king b6 king g6 king c5 f5 king d4 the white king is way too quick getting back and white will win the game unfortunately for Fabiano here I don't know how much time he used he didn't use a lot but he plays his move f4 which effectively draws the game on the spot because now after king to f5 and a6 we get a very similar end game with rook b2 king c7 rook a2 king b6 and king f4 but as you'll notice in this position the black king is already so close to the white pawns here it's on f4 versus f6 that there's no hope of winning the game concludes with bishop d5 Prague sacks the rook we get king takes king g3 played here king b5 f5 king c5 g5 king d4 and now g4 forcing Fabiano to trade off the h pawn and after pawn takes pawn takes there's no way to stop black from simply pushing h5 h4 h3 eliminating the last white pawn and drawing the game so the game concludes with king e5 h5 we get king to f5 played here and after h4 king g5 h3 takes takes we got bishop c6 h2 bishop d5 h1 queen bishop takes h1 and the game is drawn so first game of the rapid is drawn a huge miss for fabiano if fabiano had seen the bishop to d5 or bishop to e8 idea he would have won this game but he makes one slip with this fateful move f4 on move number 55 and because of that he throws away a potential to win the first tiebreaker game and potentially win the match now in the second game of the rapid Prague was once again pressing but the game ended in a draw in a London system so now we're going to move to the third game a new set of mini matches the players are playing 10 minutes with a five second increment same thing two games if it's tied 1-1 they move to even faster time controls so Prague is white in the first game of the two game mini match this time and he plays e4 Fabiano plays e5 we get knight to f3 knight to c6 and bishop to c4 Prague decided to play the Gucci piano with the white pieces we get knight to f6 we get d3 and now Fabiano plays bishop e7 now Fabiano has played many systems he's played bishop to e7 he's played bishop to c5 bishop e7 is a system that's considered maybe slightly inferior not terrible of course but perhaps um Fabiano wanted more of an interesting game instead of having to blitz out 20 moves of theory so you get castles castles knight to c3 Fabi plays d6 Prague goes a4 here now this move is simply designed to take some space on the queen side maybe a5 additionally if there's ever a trade of the bishops on c4 these pawns on these three squares are actually very very well placed down the road last but not least a4 is played because if you play h3 to stop bishop to g4 black can now play knight to a5 trying to trade off the knight for this light square bishop if you go to b5 i play c6 bishop a4 b5 and eventually i'll be able to trade the knight for the bishop and with the two bishops here black should be completely fine if not in fact a little bit better so Prague goes a4 Fabiano plays bishop g4 pinning the knight here taking advantage of the fact that white did not have time to play this h3 move 
Here we get h3, bishop h5, bishop to e3, and now Fabiano plays this move knight to d4. Now, this is a very interesting decision by Fabiano. I was actually playing in this beach chess championship qualifier, so I wasn't able to watch and see the exact reactions or whether this was pure prep, but this is a move that Fabiano played fairly, fairly quickly. Now, it's not a bad move per se, but it leads to a position that I feel is very difficult for black to play in general. We get bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop, knight to d5, we get takes, takes, c6, bishop b3, and now Fabiano trades the bishop for the knight on f3. Now, the reason that I don't like this position in general, and more particularly in a rapid game or blitz game, is that the most important thing I feel, assuming that you're not playing a position that's really, really sharp and everything's out of control, is the move flow. Now, the problem with the system is that here, if you don't take the knight, let's just say you go a5, white can play g4, breaking up your pin, and when you move the bishop, I take the pawn, and I'm simply winning the game. And so Fabiano decides to do this before white can play g4. But now after queen takes in g6, queen g4, all of white's moves are very simple. White wants to play f4, f5, rook f3, rook f1, and try to attack on the f file, or potentially even something like f Actually, I'll illustrate why. Uh, something like f5, rook f3, queen c7, and rook f1. And just like that, black's getting attacked very quickly on the king side, and there are all kinds of problems. And on top of that, even if you don't get that, like in the game with king g7, f4, after rook a e1 again, white can play for e5 or f5. Black doesn't have any play on the queen side here. And so essentially, Fabiano has to use time to come up with a plan, whereas Prague's moves are very simple. He literally looks for one move and one idea. He can play f5, he can play e5, he can play h4, but it's very easy to play. And Fabiano is the one who will have to use a lot of time. So Fabiano plays rook a e8. We get queen to f3 from Prague. Fabi plays queen d7. Prague plays rook e2, just trying to wait because if you go f5-2 prematurely, black can play bishop to g5, and suddenly the bishop is getting into this very critical e3 square, and black should be okay. So Prague plays rook e2, we get bishop d8, king h1, d5 played by Fabiano, finally deciding to go for it because sooner or later, white's probably going to play g4, h4, h5, all kinds of problems on the king side, and before you get too low on time, you want to clarify what's going on in the exact position. So Fabi plays d5, we get pawn takes, rook takes rook, queen takes rook, rook to e8, an excellent move played by Fabiano here, because, because what Fabi understands is that even though he's going to be down a pawn after takes takes, he has this open e file that he can use, and additionally, if white ever tries to play something like f5, suddenly you get checkmated on the dark squares. So black here is suddenly very much in the game, and I was actually very surprised to see this occur on the board. So we get b takes c6, queen f2, and now Fabi plays queen d6, and white's problems here are palpable. Even though white has this extra pawn, which I guess is the pawn on b2, you have the dark square issues to contend with because of the placement of the pawns. Your bishop on b3 is not really doing anything on this diagonal. So when you combine the open e file with a potential lineup of the battery with bishop c7, it feels very scary to play for white, also because now everything is shifted to where Fabiano's moves are very straightforward. He has basically one plan, bishop c7, and maybe rook e3 and queen e7, maybe bishop c7 with g5, but he doesn't have a whole lot to calculate. And practice is the one who has to come with an idea here to try and avoid getting blown off the board so Prague plays g3 guarding the pawn in f4 we get rook to e3 and now rook to e1 is played which illustrates the reason he played g3 in the first place because if you go rook to e1 right away after takes takes and queen f4 black is actually very close to winning now with all the weaknesses around the white king so we get g3 here and now Fabi plays rook e3, rook e1, we get bishop to b6, we get king to g2, and now Fabi plays queen f6 here. And at this point, it feels very much like this should be a draw, simply because black has the great rook here, which is supported by the pawn on d4. If you ever trade, black gets an even more advanced pass pawn on e3. And if you can't really use this open file because the rook is in the way here, it's hard to believe that any of these pawns on the queen side are going to be pushable here in order to try and win the game. So we get bishop c4, Fabi plays a5, stopping the move b4. And now we get queen to f1, we get bishop to c5, and now we have rook takes e3 being played here. Now, in this, in this position, the computer actually thinks that after h5, black is completely fine. Because if white trades here and tries to go for c3 and d4, just to illustrate the point, to close out the bishop here, you're not quite in time because after c3, there's h4 to soften the pawns on f4 and g3. And after g4, bishop c7, black is going to win this pawn on f4, or maybe even get a checkmate on the diagonal, potentially. So h5 would have been a much better move because after h4 then you can play queen to e7 takes and after queen takes e3 this should be a draw with the opposite color bishops and the fixed pawn structure on the king side white can't use any of these pawns on the queen side here and so it should just end peacefully 
So instead, Fabiano goes bishop c5. We get rook takes rook, pawn takes c3. And now black has serious problems because d4 is coming next move to break the connection between the bishop and the pawn, but also to attack the bishop. And you're going to have to waste time moving the bishop away. So we get bishop b6. And now we have the move queen to f3 being played here by Fabiano. We get the move queen to e or queen to f3 being played by Prague. Fabiano goes queen e7 here, trying to push e2 and win the game on the spot. We get king to f1 from Prague. And now we start to see the problems with the position for Fabiano. All of his pawns are very weak. The pass pawn is going to be blockaded. C6 is weak. E3 could be weak. White can also maybe get F5 in and try to put pressure on the F file as well. And White has actually no targets whatsoever. So it's getting very dire for Fabiano. So here he goes Bishop A7. So that after King E2, he can now play Queen B7, trying to infiltrate on the Queen side with Queen to B7. Prague plays b3 here. Bishop b5 is apparently a little bit better. Prague probably didn't play this because he's worried about queen d7 breaking the pin. And after takes and queen takes h3, it looks like the black queen is getting in here. But in fact, after d4, white is completely winning because the bishop is super passive. And you will simply gobble the pawn on a3 with the king. So we get b3 from Prague. Fabiano goes queen e7, again trying to infiltrate with queen a3 and queen b2. Prague plays d4. We get pawn to c5 here, and now Prague plays a surprising move, d5. Now, I suspect that Prague did not play queen takes e3 here because he probably was not 100% sure about this endgame after pawn takes and pawn takes with the two extra pawns, but the opposite color bishops. And I actually really like this from Prague because even if this endgame might be winning, all of Fabiano's moves here are going to become very, very easy since he doesn't have a lot to calculate. So Prague plays d5 here, shutting the door on the diagonal. We get the move bishop to b8. Now Prague captures, because now if you trade the queens in this position, you simply have two extra pawns, but they're all these pawns on the queen side. And long term, you can probably bring your king in with like king c4 and then use the bishop behind due to this very, very passive dark square bishop that black has here. I don't know if this is actually winning, to be clear, but it's very, very hard to play. So... In this position, Fabi goes queen f8, and now Prague plays bishop b5. Another excellent move, trying to bring his king up to the queen side with king d3 and king c4 later on. Fabi plays queen d6. We get bishop c6 here, bishop c7, and now king d3. And Prague starts the long march to the queen side. He wants to go king c4 and gobble the pawn on c5. Fabiano plays queen f6. We get king to c4. Fabi plays bishop d6, trying to guard the pawn and use the bishop on a better diagonal. But now Prague plays queen e4. We get g5, takes, queen to f1, queen to d3, queen takes h3. And now the move king b5 is played. And even though it looks kind of scary with the king running up the board, due to the opposite color bishops and the shield with all these pawns and the bishop around the king, the king is actually not in any danger here. So Fabi is trying very hard to find something, and he plays this move queen g4. Now, the last gasp here, I think, was to play queen c8, because if white takes on a5 on first glance after queen b8, it looks really quite scary here. So you play a move like queen c4, there's check, king a6, and queen b6 checkmate. And after queen b5, like for a split second, you might get worried about check and king a6 and think there's something. But white actually covers all the squares. You cover a8, you cover a7, and if check, you just block with the queen. So the king is very safe here. And what Prague probably would have spotted this, but nonetheless, you can maybe hope that he'll see the boogeyman and make a mistake. At any rate, Fabi goes queen g4, and now after king takes a5, the dust is really settling, and you're not going to be able to attack this king that's all the way over here on a5, and white is simply going to start pushing the a-pawn up the board. So we get queen takes g5 here, king b5, bishop takes pawn, Prague just starts pushing the p, because the only thing that matters is getting the pawn to the end of the board. Fabi goes bishop d6, we get a6, queen to e7, and now we have this move queen to f3 played, which basically is a move that stops black from pushing either the f-pawn or the h-pawn to h5. Bishop b8 played by Fabiano. Prague plays queen g4. We get king h6. And now he goes queen c8, infiltrating with the queen again. Fabi has to play bishop f4. You can't really go bishop a7, because after queen b7, if you play queen e2 check, there's c4, and white will win the bishop on a7. And if you trade the queens here after takes, bishop b8, king c5, white has all the white peepos here, and white should be winning. I'm not quite sure how easy it is, but with all these pawns, eventually the pawns get up the board, and white will win the game. So we have bishop to f4 played instead by Fabi, desperately hoping for something. Prague plays queen d7, trying to force the trade of the queens. Fabi goes queen e2. We get king to b6. Now c4 played, trying to open the diagonal for the dark square bishop. Prague simply plays b4, ignoring everything, understanding that all he has to focus on is getting this pawn to the end of the board, getting that second queen, and finishing off the game. 
Fabi plays queen e3, we get king to b5, queen takes c3, and now a7 is played, and the game is effectively over because the bishop guards the queening square, and there's no way to check this king on b5, which is completely safe. So Fabi goes queen d3, Prague queens with pawn to a8, we get c3 check, king to b6, queen to e3, king b7, king very safe on the light squares, no way to check with the dark square queen and bishop here, and the game concludes after c2, queen to f8 check, king g5 and queen to g7 and fabi resigns because it is mate and one on the next turn whether you go to h4 or h5 white has queen to g4 checkmate and it's gg why not so fabi loses the first 10 minute game and he's now down by one point going to the final game now fabiana tried to mount a great comeback in the final game of the 10 minute portion but prague was able to draw pretty smoothly he got a very balanced position out of the opening in another italian i believe it was and so prague was able to draw that game and prague advances to the final against magnus carlson now what i haven't talked about i have talked about in my streams but i haven't talked about it so much in the recaps because i've been covering magnus's games is one of the big things that i picked up from when i pra played prague was i felt that he was very bouncy it felt like he was very nervous like he was bouncing up and down his chair i think anybody who watched uh the actual cameras would have seen that and so i perceived Prague to be very nervous at times in my match against him and he was doing a lot of the same stuff against Fabiano today but the thing that's really important to note about is that, that is that I assume that he's very nervous and Prague I'm sure is nervous but the most important thing going forward for Prague especially since he has qualified for the candidates is that he's able to control his nerves and when we look at the candidates tournament having had a lot of experience playing in it myself the one thing that you can never avoid in the candidates is very much pressure situations where you end up with bad positions in games you're struggling you're under pressure and you're probably still okay in the games but you have to sort of uh hold your nerves be able to find some good moves and draw the games and if you're able to draw the games you're gonna have a really good chance at winning that tournament but if you can't control your nerves things can go south in a hurry and so with Prague in this match against Fabiano, I was extremely impressed with the way that he held his nerves in both the two classical games where he's under a lot of pressure. First game, he might have been losing at some point, hard to judge exactly, but a lot of pressure in the first classical game. Second game, also a lot of pressure, low on time, was able to control his nerves, draw both of those games. Today in the first rapid game, another situation where it was very, very tricky to play, but he was able to keep it together, found some excellent moves. Sure, Fabiano was winning for a move or two, but he was able to find the best practical decisions and so for me i think the prague chance in the candidates are very very good if he can continue to show these great nerves that he's showed throughout the fide world cup thus far so at any rate that means that in the grand final we have of course magnus carlson the former world chess champion playing against prague for all the marbles um they do start tomorrow there are no rest days so i will of course be doing a recap after the after that game finishes might be a little bit late since tomorrow's tuesday and i'm playing title tuesday but at any rate i hope you guys have enjoyed this recap make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already and i'll be back tomorrow with some more great youtube only content see you guys bye